What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? What's up, model car mechanics? Have you ever been to a hobby shop and you saw a model car, but you really wanted to know what was inside the box before you bought it? Today, I'm going to open up and show you what's inside the Autobianchi A112A Barth by Nito Japan. And if you stick to the end of this video, I will show you a great model car tip that will make your models look magnificent. So let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. Now we begin our series of 1979 unboxing videos with this very cool Italian Auto Bianchi A112 Abarth model kit by Nito. This model car is authentic 124th scale and includes parts to make this a motorized model, although there is no motor in this particular kit. And on the side of the box we have some pictures of the actual Auto Bianchi. As well as these images of our completed model kit and side front and back views. And now let's remove the lid and see what's inside the box. Right away we see the full-sized instruction sheets fit the bottom of the box. Here on this corner we have the body and the frame underneath. In this bag are all the components for our electric motor that unfortunately we don't have. Then we have our decal sheet which we'll see at the end of the box. Our unboxing. There's the glass as well as the black components. And then here are more of our plastic parts trees, as well as some of the gears and axles that we have in the kit. We've got our back door and our chrome wheels, the underneath of our motor, and some nice squishy tires. Here we have our full-size instructions for our Abarth A112. There is the photograph of the actual car, and here we have our front, back, and side views, as well as the color callout charts, which you can see are pointing to all the images here and here. We also have the different symbols and tools we're going to use for building our model, all on that front page. Our first panel shows our tire and front shaft assembly. Here we have the McPherson style strut with this nice little pin that goes through, and if you notice on the pin, there's a ball joint with some pins on there. This all goes through into our wheel and that squishy tire will pop onto the wheel itself. Then out the back we have a squishy tire, the rear wheel and this neoprene stopper that goes in. Then on our axle you'll notice these little U-shaped cups. Those will link into there. This is so that the front will be able to steer with the electric motor driving it as a front wheel drive unit. Panel two shows our motor installation. These are the different lengths of the wire that you need to cut in order to get this all together. You will need to uh, use some soldering skills on here to solder in the different uh, switches and whatnot to the wires. This is an actual switch that will be going in so that it will save on your battery life Here's our motor with the gear being installed, as well as a rear axle with the front larger gear going on. These side images show you how to click the motor into place into this bracket area. And then it also shows how to wire in the motor and the headlights. And at the bottom of the box, I actually did find the electric motor that goes in here, which I missed in the opening. Panel three shows how to assemble the front axles. This is our rack and pinion style steering, which has a little locking gears in there. And there's a little sort of a piece of plastic that sticks up. And those will go across the piece of plastic that sticks up so that you can turn this and it'll lock the drive shaft into place. Or not the drive shaft, the tie rod into place, pardon me. Here we have the bottom of the motor and the bottoms of the little towers for our McPherson struts. Once this pops down into place, it will hold the front wheels in position. Step four shows our switch assembly for the motorized model. Here we have our metal contact points being bent into the plastic. The wires we need, the little switch pedal, and even in here there's a stopper and some other components. Once this is all together, the switch will be able to move back and forth, thus turning on and off your car. 
On the back end, we have a rear wheel mounting. This is a bar that goes across and locks into place, followed by our rear axle and our rear wheels. And you'll note that the switch is in behind, and it does have a position here, this way for on and that way for off. Now with the drive line out of the way, we can concentrate on our interior. What you'll notice here is we have this cover for our battery at the back of the car, which also covers our switch and our electric wires. This is all covered over with the back seat. So there's a seat bottom and some little hinges that glue in place so that you can swing this up. And then on our back seat, the top portion of it, we also have little hinges so you can swing the seat down. There we've got our bucket seats, which will drop into place, as well as our center console with our shift lever and our parking brake. The model also includes these nice bucket seats with individual headrests, a dashboard with a steering column and a separate steering wheel, and then separately molded side panels so you can get in there and put in all the nice bare metal foil detail and all the rest. Then we have our windshield and side glass being dropped into our body underneath, as well as the rear view mirror and these nice side pieces. Step nine is the rear gate assembly. Here we have the upper part of our hinge, which will glue onto the roof of the car. You want to make sure that your rear gate is in place before this goes down, because these little U-shaped hooks hook into the little pins on our hinge. Then you end up gluing in the rear window, and here's the side body moldings. Panel 10 shows our lighted up rear end assembly. Here you can put in the little lights into the side of our body. You want to paint in behind here silver, or use bare metal foil to act as a reflector. Once that is done, you can paint on your clear tail lights with some transparent red and turn signal amber. And then that goes into the rear panel, as well as our license plate and the rear bumper. And all this hooks up to the back end of our vehicle. Panel 11 shows our chassis mounting into the body. So it just goes in at the front on these little locks and then swings into the back. You need to push out the sides of the body and the rear just a little bit in order for all this to snap into place. Once that is in together, you can add in your exhaust system. And then on the body itself, you put in these nice little side louvers as well as the rear window wiper. To complete the car, we go up front on panel 12, where we put in our headlights, as well as a little vent into our hood scoop, and the front of the car, followed by the bumper, turn signal lamps, the front license plate, as well as our side view mirrors and our window wipers. Our final panel shows you all the different types of parts trees that are included in this kit, as well as a paint guide on the side. Here we have the body of our Abarth. And it is quite a nice little teeny car if you're into the smaller cars. You get the great door handle as well as the fuel door here. There's a slot that helps you align in those side brace panels. There's our front end looking nice and cute. There is a little symbol right there that is quite nice to see and stands up a bit so you can easily paint it. The little scoop on the hood for that sporty look. Then there is the back panel with the open gate. If we turn it over, you can see the little sunken indentations where the hood hinge goes in so that it becomes quite level and doesn't hang down too much inside the car. Not any mold marks inside here, which is quite nice. Maybe a little bit of flash, but very easy to clean up and very nice to assemble. Here we have our chassis for our little Fiat. And inside here is that blade I was talking about, which goes onto our steering, and that will lock it into place. There's little clips inside, as you can see, for mounting our motor in and for the gear to line up. There's where our front bucket seats will lock into place, and our little mechanism in the back for our switch and our battery. Then turning it over, you can see just how nice this is. Looks like a real car under here. You got your fuel tank and then the flat floor pan as well as the sides because this is basically a unibody type of vehicle. There's a little hole for your axle to go through and again very nicely done. On our next parts tree we have the bottom of the engine which was in this square here. There's our dashboard as well as our bucket seats and the backs of the seats, the headrests. 
There's the hinges for our rear seat, which has this little panel here, our center console, there's the lever for our switch, and our exhaust system is also on here with our side mirrors. So if we just bring this up to the camera, you can see just how nice that dashboard is. Our seats also have the cloth style upholstery pattern molded in place. There's the hinge for the top of the car. Turning that over, just thought there might have been some engraving on the back of the license plates, but I think that is all just basically a decal. There's our steering for the front, and you can see these nice big cones that allow for the mechanism to turn and our motor to still be able to drive the front wheels, just like a real front wheel drive vehicle. We also have our windshield wiper blades right in there. The second parts tree includes the door panels, which are nicely molded. Then we've got our rear seat, as well as the little hatch in the back. There's the back molding of our car, as well as the rear bumper, and all the little parts in between. If you look at this panel, you can see the nice speaker on the side, as well as little pockets for your maps, and the little window winders. There's the side vent louvers, and our seat as well as the rear back panel and our bumper. Next we have our steering wheel, the grill, the bumper, and the side moldings. And look at this grill. This grill is really nicely detailed. You can see all the little vents underneath, just like the real car. On the back, you'll notice a few sink marks, which you'll have to get rid of with your number 16 hobby blade. But overall, this is an excellent little model. I thought I would share these two pieces together because there isn't any other chrome apart from these wheels, but it is done really nicely for what there is. And here we have the rear tailgate hatch. Now a little bare metal foil on here wouldn't hurt, as well as maybe some black metal bare metal foil. Again, the rear hatch is really nicely done. There's two little moldings as well as the little button to unlock the hatch with. On the back there is a sink mark which needs to be addressed. Overall though, really really nice. Move that to the side and you can see our nice wheels. They are hollow through the back. We're not hollow but the little the little holes are are drilled through. So you got some in the front or actually those are the back ones with the little neoprene that sticks in and these ones go onto the front. Overall, the chrome is excellent on that, and I would say once again that this is a very wonderful mold. Here's the glass components for our little Abarth. We have our front windshield as well as the side vent windows. There's the side windows for the rear, and a nice notch for our tailgate to be able to lift open in. That's the spot for the hinge. There's the rear glass. Here's our headlamps and the rear tail lamps and our marker lights. The detail on the rear marker lights is quite exceptional. You can see all the little signals that go in there. And on our headlights, we also have the headlight pattern. So just make sure that you glue it in the right way and not at weird angles. Also included in the kit are all the components that we need to make the car electric. We have the wire that's included, the little switches and metal brackets, the neoprene for the front or rear axle actually, the rear axle in the back, and here is our front axle with the gear and that little groove for our steering mechanism. Very nice again, but I'm not gonna open the bag in case I lose the parts. Here we have the Bridgestone tires which are nice and squishy. I love the rubber that the Japanese use. They do have a pretty wicked seam line running up the center of that tread, which you can get rid of with a wheel spinning tool, but they are very nice little tires and will look good on your model. Here we have our decal sheet with these two license plates. One says Abarth A112, and the other is a Japanese license plate, of course, because this is a Japanese model number 91-68. You get the little Scorpion logo and some other little features that are really cool on here for uh, racing and other sponsors. Have you built this model car before? How did you like it? Did you have fun with it? Did you actually put in the electric motor and make it run around in circles? If so, let us know all those questions in the comment section down below.
I hope you found this video very helpful for your next model car purchase. If you enjoy these videos and would like to help us out, don't forget to click the join button down below for special privileges as well as your support. Now, as promised, this video right here will show you a really cool technique that you can apply to your model cars. And if you want to see what model cars that you can buy from me today, check out this link right down here. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that video and we'll see you on the next one.